Hey guys and welcome to my Draw My Life video. Now these videos were all the rage last year and I didn't do one at the time because I don't really like jumping on the bandwagon so I waited until now to celebrate a very special milestone that I will talk about at the end and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is my life. So I was born on the 19th of July 1988 in the rural English countryside and my parents were actually really worried. I was born by um, cesarean section and my parents were worried when I was born that there was something wrong with me. They thought my stomach was going to be inside out but it turned out I was normal which was awesome. My dad had super curly hair as you can see and apparently in the 70s it was down to his shoulders which is crazy. I have a brother called Alex and a sister called Hannah and together we were one big, very happy family. Just after I was born, we moved into a big new house. Actually, it was pretty much a barn when we moved in, and for the first few months, we all slept in one room, and because I can't remember what this looked like because I was only a baby, I've just drawn us in a sardine can because I thought we must have been squished in like sardines. It took a few years to finish the house, and actually my parents still work on it all the time. It's kind of a work in progress for my dad, but one thing that has always been the case, it's always been an extremely happy home. There's a stream in the field um, out behind the house, and I used to fish in it and swim in it when I was a kid. There's sheep and I have always had dogs in my life. We had two black Labradors growing up and we always had lots of cats. Talking of cats, one of my earliest memories of being at home is this creepy barn. It's still there and it's still pretty creepy. And when we first moved in, there were lots of wild cats in this barn. Um, and my brother was determined to tame one. He finally managed to catch one and tamed it. And he called it Ferrari and it lived for the next 20 years or so I think. Also on another note I had particularly bad hair at this point in my life. A huge chunky fringe. I don't know why because my sister had really gorgeous long blonde hair and my mum just decided to cut mine. By the time I went to school I was a little bit more advanced than a lot of the other kids in my class and I don't mean academically. Um, my vocabulary, shall we say, had advanced a little bit further than normal for my age due to my brother being five years older than me and my sister being seven years older than me. Um, one day in class we were studying Uncle Dick and um, I told the teacher why I thought that was stupid. Um, another interesting story about my advanced vocabulary at a young age, we used to go to Portugal um, every year in the summer and it was gorgeous and I have such good memories of it. One of my earliest memories out there is having this duck this inflatable duck that got punctured. One day, a lady came along and asked me what its name was. Um, yeah, I don't think she was very impressed and I don't think she stuck around for very long after that. Um, when I got a little bit older, I started not to enjoy school very much. I got bullied by a group of really not very nice girls and I um, got a little bit down and my grades started to drop and to be honest, I really just found comfort in food and I put on quite a bit of weight. I was never really, really big, but I was definitely chubby and I became really insecure about that and the bullying got worse and I just remember watching MTV on the sofa all the time. Eventually the bullying got too much and my mum decided to send me to a new school, which actually looked nothing like this. I just got bored of drawing square boxes. It had a super sexy uniform at my new school of a tweed jacket and a long grey skirt and that's not a moustache, that's an uneasy face. Uh, but what it did have that was awesome at the new school were lots of nice people and I made lots of lovely new friends. I was so much happier, I began eating a lot more healthily and I lost weight and was just really happy in myself. I met my first boyfriend and loved him, met my second boyfriend and third boyfriend and they all broke my heart. They probably didn't break my heart but I had a few boyfriends in school. Um, and then when it came to doing my A-levels, I chose some kind of hard subjects and to be honest I really really struggled doing physics. I'm really not sure why I chose to do physics but I was so worried about it. But by the time results day rolled around, um, this is an old fashioned telephone, we did have one that looked just like this, um, I actually really surprised myself and managed to get all A's. I was super super happy and it just goes to show that hard work and being happy really can pay off. I decided to take a gap year after leaving school because I wanted to explore the world a little bit. I ended up working for the first six months of it to save some money so that I could pay for my round the world ticket 
um, and I tried really hard not to buy handbags but I still bought a few therefore I had to stay a bit longer than everybody else before I got on this really super safe looking plane it didn't really look like that and flew to Australia I loved Australia I loved the lifestyle it was so relaxing um, and the most memorable thing I did when I was there was got a tattoo. I got two stars on my foot, one for my brother and one for my sister. I then went to New Zealand which is honestly the most beautiful, beautiful place I've ever been. I climbed a glacier with a ice axe and some huge walking boots and it was amazing. When I was in New Zealand I also decided to do um, the biggest bungee jump they have in the country and I managed to get all the way down with just one expletive. Um, I'll let you fill in the blanks there. Um, I also got my tongue pierced in New Zealand and it was actually the only thing that shocked my parents when I got home and it really hurt and I had to live on liquid food for a week. Next we headed to Fiji and went island hopping which was absolutely amazing. One of my favourite memories is sitting around a campfire with some locals drinking their traditional drink of kava which apparently is an illegal drug in some countries but I didn't know it at the time. Our next stop was California and we flew into LA, rented a car and then headed to Vegas which was crazy. We actually travelled around California with a couple of friends we had met in New Zealand so that was pretty cool. After going to Vegas we headed to San Francisco, visited Alcatraz and we also stopped at Yosemite and drove through Death Valley too. My very last stop of my three months travelling was New York which was awesome but by the time I headed home I was thoroughly ready to get there. My taxi actually crashed on the way to the airport which was an absolute nightmare but by the time I arrived at Heathrow I had plaits in my hair, a tattoo, my tongue pierced, my dad was very unimpressed but my mum cried because she was so happy I was home. A couple of weeks after I got back from travelling I met a guy. Um, I met him at a party and as he was approaching the door I walked past and said I'm not coming to say hello I'm going to the loo. This guy turned out to be Mike um, and actually after I came back from the loo and chatted to him we hit it off straight away. I never like to say I believe in love at first sight but it was pretty much love at first sight. Things got serious pretty quickly from then on. A few weeks after that I moved to university in London. My mum and dad and my sister came to drop me off. My sister really is that small, it's a life-size drawing. Um, and I moved into my halls. My room in halls was teeny tiny. I had a single bed, a desk, some shelves above my bed, and a tiny little wardrobe that all my clothes used to fall out of when I opened it. And just enough room to swing a cat, but I didn't have a cat. After just a couple of weeks at uni, I realized I really didn't like it. Um, and Mike really was my saving grace. He used to come and see me every weekend in his snazzy car. Um, and after about a year and a half, of going out he asked me to move in with him in his new house which was pretty much perfect. It had a fence and flowers in the garden and it was just the cutest little house you could ever imagine. Around the same time we decided that we would like to get a dog. We chose a spring spaniel because we loved their nature and we went to pick her up on Valentine's Day 2009 and we named her Woof. She was amazing. We also got two kittens and named them Beaver and Growler. This is actually about a year and a half after we got Worth, but I got a bit carried away drawing the pets. In the summer of 2009, I discovered YouTube. Obviously I knew YouTube existed, but I didn't know about the beauty community on YouTube. I can't remember if I found Juicy Star 07 or Lollipop 26 first, but I fell in love with the whole community instantly. I showed it to my mum and she convinced me to start my own channel. I headed back to uni after the summer and I was determined to finish my course because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Mike used to wave me off at the station and I used to cry every time. Around this time I also met my best friend Becky. She looks nothing like this but we became firm friends very quickly and I spent the next year juggling my YouTube channel with my work. By the time we both graduated my YouTube channel had grown so much that it was kind of a possibility to make it a job. I got the opportunity to fly to LA and to New York and to Florida for Playlist Live. I met friends all over the world and I had the best time growing my channel and meeting people and it turned into the best job ever. And I can't thank you guys enough 
for that and for still being here. On one of those trips that I was lucky enough to take, Mike actually got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. I said yes, obviously, and it was one of the best days in my whole life. On a more sad note, also whilst I was away in America, Woofy got poorly and she got diagnosed with a disease called IMHA and sadly after just five days of being ill she passed away. I cried a lot, Mike cried a lot and I'd never seen him cry before and to be honest it was a really sad time in our lives. I know she was just a dog but it really, really made me sad for quite a long time. But Mike and I decided to move on, we bought our first home together which was super exciting and we got two new puppies to move in with us. They'll never replace Woofy, but they are so fun and they just have the most hilarious personalities. We named them Squidge and Treacle. The cats also came with us, for any of those wondering. I just like drawing cats. And all together, we are super duper happy in our new home. Shortly after we moved into our new house, I got asked to fly to New York to be on a TV show called Project Runway, which was massively scary. I had to walk the runway, I thought I was going to fall on my face, and Nina Garcia told me I looked like seaweed. She was actually super nice backstage, but the whole experience was insane and super awesome and one of the best things that has happened to me. With exception of the next thing I'm going to tell you about, which is my wedding day. I can't actually believe how badly I've drawn this because um, considering it was the best day of my whole life, um, I thought I would have drawn it a bit better. But Mike and I got married on the 24th of August 2013. It was amazing. I wore a big white dress and a huge smile. I don't remember smiling so much in my whole life. People threw confetti all over us and my favourite part was the fact we had fairy lights in the dance floor that made my dress glow and we had starlights around the dance floor too, which I loved. It was the best day ever. A few weeks ago, my YouTube channel hit a million subscribers and I did this video as a little bit of a celebration to say thank you. I can't even begin to comprehend what a million people looks like, so I just wanted to say to each and every one of you, I love you. Yes, you. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It honestly means the absolute world and you have made my life amazing. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more. That would be totally awesome and I will see you next time. Bye bye! Scenario number two, you go for an interview and the lady interviewing you has lipstick on her teeth. Do you approach the subject or ignore it completely? Now it may